<clears throat> Welcome back. This is now lesson four, dealing with rational numbers. So let's um, go ahead and get started. Let me share my screen with you. Okay, so I want to start off with, first off, is a check on learning. <clears throat> where this is from the last lesson that we just did. So this was graphing real numbers. And so if you remember <clears throat> the last lesson, this is what we did. Um, so what I want you to do is on a blank piece of paper, <clears throat> go ahead and draw a number line across. And so mine goes from negative five to positive six. <clears throat> but, um, and just to draw a straight line across and go ahead and number it. And you're gonna do that twice because we got two of two of these statements. And then on the top one, what I want you to graph would be x is greater than negative three. And so kind of think about that. So this is greater than, it's not greater than or equal to negative three. And then the other one is x is less than or equal to five. So think about how you would do that as well. So um, go ahead at this point. You can pause the video, Cotted Staff, while everybody works on these. And once everybody has a solution, then go ahead and unpause it and I'll show you the answers. Okay, I'm gonna assume now that we unpause the video and now let's go over the answers here. So, all right, so if we look at the first one, a greater than a negative three. So remember that's greater than, not greater than or equal to. So it would be an open, there'd be an open dot. So we have on here an open dot. So because it's not including, the reason why I do an open dot is because it's not including the negative three. And then it's greater than, so it'd be um, all numbers to the right. So negative three, so then it'd be every number um, that is um, numbers in between, um, but every number to the right. So there's my red arrow. The next one is X is less than or equal to five. And so the key here is it includes the number five because we have equal to. So here you've got <clears throat> five. So it'd be a solid dot and then all of the numbers to the left of the solid dot. Okay, so hopefully Everybody got those right. If you didn't, go ahead and maybe you can talk to one of your classmates and maybe they can help clarify this a little bit better for you. All right, let's move on. So now we're gonna start with lesson four. So this is our new material for today. And so we're gonna talk about these two learning targets. <clears throat> so the first one is I can solve inequalities and graph the solution sets. And the second one is I can explain relations. Okay, if you wanna write those in your notes, that'd be okay, you don't need to, but this is what we're gonna be covering for today. All right, so we're gonna start off <clears throat> with a um, Khan Academy video, it's about eight minutes long, called Solving Inequalities with Variables on One Side. So I think and then we'll do some practice with those. So let me go ahead and bring that up. What I want to do in this video is a handful of fairly simple inequality videos, but the real value of it, I think, will be just to get you warmed up in the notation of inequality. So let's just start with one. So we have x minus 5 is less than 35. So let's see if we can find all of the x's that will satisfy this equation. And that's one of the distinctions of an inequality. In an equation, you typically have one solution, or at least the ones we've solved so far. In the future, we'll see equations where you have more than one solution. But in the ones we've solved so far, you solve for a particular x. In the inequalities, there's a whole set of x's that will satisfy this inequality. So they're saying, what are all the x's that when you subtract 5 from them, it's going to be less than 35? And we can already 
really think about it. I mean, zero minus five, that's less than 35. Minus 100 minus five, that's less than 35. Five minus five, that's less than 35. So there's clearly a lot of X's that will satisfy that. And what we want to do is come up with a solution that essentially encompasses all of the X's. So the way we do that is essentially the same way that we solved any equations. We want to get just the X terms, in this case on the left-hand side. So I want to get rid of this negative five, and I can do that by adding five to both sides of this equation. So I can add five to both sides of this equation. That won't change the inequality, it won't change the less than sign. If something is less than something else, something plus five is still going to be less than the other thing plus five. So on the left-hand side, we just have an x. This negative 5 and this positive 5 cancel out. x is less than 35 plus 5, which is 40. And that's our solution. And to just visualize the set of all numbers that represents, let me draw a number line here. Let me draw a number line here. And I'll do it around, let's say that's 40, this 40, 41. 42, and then we could go below 40, 39, 38, and you can just keep going below 40. It just keeps going on in both directions. And any x that is less than 40 will satisfy this. So it can't be equal to 40, because if, if x is equal to 40, 40 minus 5 is 35. It's not less than 35. So x has to be less than 40. And to show this on the number line, we do a circle around 40 to show that we're not including 40, but then we can shade in everything below 40. So everything that's just exactly below 40 is included in our solution set. So everything I've shaded in yellow is included in our solution set. So 39, 39.9999999 repeating, which is about as close as you can get to 40 as possible, that's in our solution set, but 40 is not. And that's why we put that open circle around it. Let's do another one. Let me do it in another color as well. So let's say we have x, let me do it over on this top right corner. Let's say we have x plus 15 is greater than or equal to negative 60. Notice, now we have greater than or equal. So let's solve this the same way we solved that one over there. We can subtract 15 from both sides. And I like to switch up my notation. Here I added the 5 kind of on the same line. You could also do your adding or subtracting below the line like this. So if I subtract 15 from both sides, so I do a minus 15 there, and I do a minus 15 there, then the left-hand side just becomes an x because obviously you have 15 minus 15, that just cancels out. And you get x is greater than or equal to negative 60 minus 15 is negative 75. If something is greater than or equal to something else, if I take 15 away from this and from that, the greater than or equal sign will still apply. So our solution is x is greater than or equal to negative 75. Let's graph it on the number line. So let me draw a number line here. I'll have... Let's say that's negative 75, that's negative 74, that's negative 73, that's negative 76, and so on and so forth. I could keep plotting things. Now x has to be greater than negative, greater than or equal to negative 75. So the x can be equal to negative 75. So we can include the point because we have this greater than or equal sign. Notice we're not making it hollow like we did there. We're making it filled in because it can equal negative 75 or it needs to be greater than. So greater than or equal will shade in everything above negative 75 as well. So an orange is the solution set. And this obviously, uh, we could keep going to the right. The X could be a million, it could be a billion, it could be a Google, it could be an arbitrarily large number as long as it's greater than or equal to negative 75. Let's do a couple more. Let's do x, x minus 2. x minus 2 is less than or equal to 1. Once again, we want to get just our x on the left-hand side, get rid of this negative 2. Let's add 2 to both sides of this equation. Plus 2, plus 2. The left-hand side just becomes an x. You have a less than or equal sign. That won't change by adding or subtracting the same thing to both sides of the inequality. And then 1 plus 2 is 3. So x needs to be less than or equal to 3. Any x that is less than or equal to 3 will satisfy this equation. So let's plot it. 
and I try out any x that's less than or equal to three and verify for yourself that it does indeed satisfy this inequality. I shouldn't call it an equation, this inequality. So let me graph the solution set. So let's say this is zero, one, two, three, four, that's negative one, negative two. So x has to be less than or equal to three. It can be equal to three, so we fill in the dot, or less than three. So the solution set over here is in pink. Anything less than or equal to three. And verify it for yourself. If, f, if x is equal to three, you get three minus two, which is equal to one, and that is valid because it could be less than or equal. If you do 2.999999 minus two, you get 0.999999, which is less than one. And you could keep trying for any of these numbers in this pink solution set here. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Let's say we have x minus 32 is less than or equal to zero. Same drill as before. Let's add 32 to both sides of this equation. Let's add 32 to both sides of this equation. The left-hand side just becomes x, and then the right-hand side is less than or equal to 32. Pretty straightforward. Same drill when we graph this equation. Let me draw the number line. If this is 32, this is 33, this is 31. I could keep adding things above and below 32. But the solution set is everything less than or equal. So we can, it could be equal to 32 or less than. So we fill in everything below that. Remember, the reason why we're filling in the solid, the reason why 32 is an acceptable solution to this original inequality is because of this less than or equal sign. Over here, you didn't have less than or equal, and that's why 40 wasn't part of the solution set. All right. <clears throat> Let's go back to the PowerPoint here. Okay, so now, <clears throat> after that video, let's do a little bit of practice. All right, so what I want to do is um, want to go ahead and practice solving each inequality below. So on this, so cottage staff, go ahead and give everybody an opportunity to write these problems down and then go ahead and pause this video and give them a chance Okay, I'm going to go ahead and assume now that everybody has a solution to the problems. And so let's go through and show the answers. All right, so the first one, you um, just like in the video that you just watched, you subtract 19 from both sides. And that way we just get x is greater than or equal to 3 minus 19, which would be greater than or equal to minus 16. <clears throat> and I didn't graph these. We're going to have an opportunity to do that. I just wanted to solve these inequalities. And so the next one would be x is less than 16. And then the last one would be x is less than or equal to negative 15. If you um, didn't, if you missed one or you missed a couple, see if one of your classmates can look at this to help you out. Otherwise, you can always call me during my office hours. All right, so now, <clears throat> This one here, I want you guys to go ahead and solve this and then graph it. So the same thing, <clears throat> kind of stuff, you can go ahead and pause the video while everybody writes this down and then solves it and graphs it. Okay, I'm assuming at <clears throat> this point, you've unpaused the video and we're back. Let me show you the solution. <clears throat> Oh, looks like I gave you guys the wrong problem. <clears throat> so this would be, you'd be x is greater than or equal to seven. <clears throat> and so not x is greater than or equal to negative five. So this would actually be seven. So it would actually be, if your graph should be a seven <clears throat> and then go on to the right in a solid dot. Sorry about that, I messed, somehow I messed this one up. I'll have to fix that. So you'd have, your solid dot on a seven, and then going to the right. Okay, <clears throat> let's go ahead. I got another 
video I want to show you. We're asked to solve for P, and we have the inequality here. Negative 3P minus 7 is less than P plus 9. So what we really want to do is isolate the P on one side of this inequality, and preferably the left. That just makes it a little bit easier to read. It doesn't have to be, but we just want to isolate the P. So a good step to that is to get rid of this P on the right-hand side, and the best way I can think of doing that is subtracting P from the right. But of course, if we want to make sure that this inequality is always going to be true, if we do anything to the right, we also have to do that to the left. So we also have to subtract p from the left. And so the left-hand side, negative 3p minus p, that's negative 4p, and then we still have a minus 7 up here, is going to be less than p minus p, those cancel out, it is less than 9. Now the next thing I'm in the mood to do is get rid of this negative 7, or this minus 7 here, so that we can better isolate the p on the left-hand side. So the best way I can think of to get rid of a negative 7 is to add 7 to it. Then we'll just cancel out to 0. So let's add 7 to both sides of this inequality. Negative 7 plus 7 cancel out. All we're left with is negative 4p. On the right-hand side, we have 9 plus 7 is 16. And it's still less than. Now the last step to isolate the p is to get rid of this negative 4 coefficient. And the easiest way I can think of to get rid of this negative 4 coefficient is to divide both sides by negative 4. So if we divide this side by negative 4, these guys are going to cancel out. We're just going to be left with p. We also have to do it to the right-hand side. Now there's one thing that you really have to remember, since this is an inequality. This is not an equation. If you're dealing with an inequality, and if you multiply or divide both sides of the equation by a negative number, you have to swap the inequality. So in this case, the less than becomes greater than, since we're dividing by a negative number. And so negative 4 divided by negative 4, those cancel out. We have p is greater than 16 divided by negative 4, which is negative 4. And we can plot this solution set right over here. And then we can try out some values to help us feel good about the idea of it working. So let's say this is negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, 1, negative 1, I should say, 0. Let me write that a little bit neater. Negative 1, 0. And then we can keep going to the right. And so our solution is p is not greater than or equal, so we have to exclude negative 4. p is greater than negative 4, so all the values above that. Also, oh, negative 3.9999999 will work. Negative 4 will not work. And let's just try some values out to feel good that this is really the solution set. So first, let's try out, let's try out when p is equal to negative 3. This should work. The way I've drawn it, this is in our solution set. p equals negative 3 is greater than negative 4. So let's try that out. We have negative 3 times negative 3. This is a, the first negative 3 is this one. And then we're saying p is negative 3. Minus 7 should be less than, instead of a p, we're going to put a negative 3. Should be less than negative 3 plus 9. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Minus 7 should be less than negative 3 plus 9 is 6. 9 minus 7 is 2. 2 should be less than 6, of which, of course, it is. Now let's try a value that definitely should not work. So let's try negative 5. Negative 5 is not in our solution set, so it should not work. So we have negative 3 times negative 5 minus 7. Let's see whether it is less than negative 5 plus 9. Negative 3 times negative 5 is 15 minus 7. It should really should not be less than negative 5 plus 9. So we're just seeing if p equals negative 5 works. 15 minus, 15 minus 7 is 8. And so we get 8 is less than 4, which is definitely, this is definitely not the case. So p equals negative 5 doesn't work, and it shouldn't work, because that's not in our solution set. And now if we want to feel really good about it, we can actually try this boundary point. Negative 4 should not work, but it should satisfy the related equation. When I talk about the related equation, negative 4 should satisfy negative 3 minus 
7 is equal to p plus 9. It'll satisfy this, but it won't satisfy this because when we get to the same value on both sides, the same value is not less than the same value. So let's try it out. Let's see whether negative 4 at least satisfies the, the related equation. So if we get negative 3 times negative 4 minus 7, this should be equal to negative 4 plus 9. So this is 12 minus 7 should be equal to negative 4 plus 9 should be equal to 5. And this, of course, is true. 5 is equal to 5. So it satisfies the related equation, but it should not satisfy this. If you put negative 4 for p here, and I encourage you to do so, actually we could do it over here instead of an equal sign. If you put it into the original inequality, let me do, delete all of that, it really just becomes this. The original inequality is this right over here. If you put negative 4, you have less than, less than, and then you get 5 is less than 5, which is not the case. And that's good because we did not include that in the solution set. We put an open circle. If negative 4 was included, we would fill that in. But the only reason why we would include negative 4 is if this was greater than or equal. So it's good that this does not work because negative 4 is not part of our solution set. You can kind of view it as a boundary point. Okay, <clears throat> let's do some practice work here. Okay, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and solve these inequalities. So on your paper, go ahead and write these down. So x plus 16 is less than 2x plus 20, and then 5x minus 6 is less than or equal to 4x plus 1. I'll give you about 30 seconds to write these down, and then <clears throat> we'll go through the solutions. Okay, <clears throat> so the first one, you want to get the x's on the left side, just like he did in the video. So you'd have, if you put the x minus 2x on the left and then subtract, and if you move the 16 to the right, you subtract it. So then you're going to get a negative x that's less than 4. So x would actually be a negative 4. And then the other one, next one would be 5x minus 4x is less than or equal to 1 plus 6, because if you want to get rid of the 6 on the left, you add 6. <clears throat> you add 6 to the right, and then you're going to get 5x minus 4x is x, which is less than or equal to 7. And I didn't graph these, but those would be your solutions. OK. If you need to pause this to get these written down, that's OK. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and move on. All right, now I want you, this is a check on learning. So this is what I want. Now I want you guys to do this. So it says solve the inequality below, and then I want you to graph the solution. So we're going to go ahead and, um, Kata staff, go ahead and pause the video so everybody can write this problem down and then solve it and then graph the solution, and I'll show you the answer. Okay, I'm assuming now we've unpaused the video. So let me show you the. So you take the three times, distribute the three to the inside the parentheses. So you get three times x is three x, and then negative three times three would be minus nine is greater than two x. And you want to get the x's on the left side and the numbers on the right. So to get rid of the two x on the left, you subtract two x from both sides. So you bring that over 3x minus 2x, and then you add the 9 over. So 3x minus 2x is greater than 9, so therefore x is greater than 9. So you use, remember if it's greater than, so we use an open circle because it does not include the 9. So you should have an open circle on 9 and then an arrow going to the right. Okay, hopefully you all got these correct. If not, you can maybe ask one of your classmates to help you explain maybe a better way of doing it. All right, our last topic we're going to talk about today is introduction to relations. So in this one, in algebra, equal, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to, 
are sometimes called relations. And the way you want to think about relations is think about relations in your own family. So relations in your family are people connected to you in a certain way, such as mother, father, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, etc. So this example here, we have S of X. So I'm using the S to represent like a sister of X. So the sister of, and I'm substituting Joseph for the X. So the sister of Joseph, the way we would interpret that would be a sister of Joseph. Okay. So Kyle Staff, you can go ahead and pause this if people want to write this down in their notes to kind of, to capture this. But we're going to cover more of this tomorrow. But I'm kind of go ahead and assume you unpause the video. And so <clears throat> relations and families pair people with other people, like we talked about your aunt, uncle, father, mother, sister, brother. Relationships in algebra pair numbers with other numbers. That's the difference. For example, the greater than relation. We'll use g of x to mean a number greater than x. G represents greater than. I just picked, you can pick any letter, but I picked g just because it makes sense because we're talking about greater. So g of x to mean a number greater than x. So g of five greater than five means a number greater than five equals seven or is seven or seven is greater than five. Okay, you can go ahead and get this written in your notes. We said we're gonna cover this more in tomorrow's lesson, but I just wanted to get this as just a quick introduction to the term relations. So when I'm talking about relations in algebra, you'll um, get an understanding of what that is. Okay, so that wraps up lesson um, four. Four or five. So we have one more lesson tomorrow that we'll go through um, on dealing with um, rational numbers. So I just want to thank you for your attention and paying attention. <laughs>